Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we are taking a look at what worships post Dead Eye, and talking about what effects I've seen so far on the second day of the patch, because I'm recording this on a Thursday. So right off the bat, battleships pretty much only have one build now, one build that's really effective in making a battleship a better battleship. And that was, of course, the tank build. Now, if you do have a secondary battleship, like a German battleship, or one of the secondary American battleships, you can, of course, run the secondary build, which is very good for those ships. But 90% of the battleships in this game are going to be taking just a tank build, and that's just about it. And even with the tank build, you don't have a lot of flexibility to differentiate it from a standard tank build. You pretty much can only really choose your one point skill just depending upon what ship you're playing or your play style. But the other skills, you're pretty much going to be taking the same thing regardless of what ship you're in. And that's pretty sad. I mean, again, the whole point of the rework was to add diversity to the builds, but for 90% of battleships, you're using pretty much the same build I have here. You may pick a different one, a one point skill, but that's about it. So the skill build I'm running right now on 90% of my battleships is the one you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, this is my Russian battleship commander build, so I have preventive maintenance because, you know, it sucks when your turret gets knocked out in a battleship. But this is the point at where you're going to really just pick which one point skill you want to start with. And the only other one I can see you starting out with different really is maybe expert loader or well gun feeder now if you have a British battleship. That way you can swap them between your uh, HE and your AP pretty quickly. But honestly, with like the higher uh, tier British battleships, like with uh, Lion and Conqueror, I mean, you got HE loaded. That's your best ammunition type. And if you hit the target, you're going to be doing great HE alpha and starting fires too. But yeah, if Cruiser pops up and you got HE loaded and they're showing you broadside, you think they'll they keep selling in a straight line for another 15 seconds. Sure, go ahead, pop it and uh, hit them with AP. Um, other than that, I mean, if you want emergency repair specialist, if you're maybe playing a Russian battleship and you want your quick damage uh, damage con timer to be even quicker, sure, maybe. Um, or if you just want your damage con and repair party to be off cooldown a little bit faster, maybe. But I do think permanent maintenance is the better choice over that. But again, it's up to you for the one point skill. Everything else, though, you're pretty much going to be taking what I'm taking. So uh, grease the gears. Again, unless you're playing a Russian battleship or like the Ohio, uh, maybe you want to take... Actually, I don't know what else you take here. Maybe party target if you're a bit of a newer player. That way you know who's aiming at you, but you don't really need that skill once you get a couple thousand battles under your belt. That's just something you start doing uh, as you play the game and get used to keeping an, an eye on who's around you and having good situational awareness. Then you don't really need that uh, two-point skill anymore. But Grease the Gears is a pretty solid choice for all battleships because even if you have a battleship with a quick turret rotation rate, if you get into a very tight situation, you'd be surprised how much that comes into play. But anyway, the rest of it is just what you're going to take if you're taking a tank build. So, Adrenaline Rush, Basis of Survivability, Emergency Repair Expert, Concealment Expert, and of course Fire Prevention. And the order I would get this in is my first three points to go be Adrenaline Rush, First four point skill would be emergency repair expert. Second four point skill would be fire prevention. Um, and at this point, if you're having a bad day with fires, go ahead and pick up basics of survivability first. If not, take consumer expert first and then just get basics of survivability later. It's up to you at that point which skill you want to get first. Just get two of them and then there you go. That's going to be your build for 90% of battleships in the game now. And that's it. <laughs> There's very little customization. Again, like the one point skills, if you got a British battleship, want to take gun feeder, okay. Um, if you want to take emergency repair specialist expert because you got a quick cooldown time, we'll make it faster, okay. Other than that, not really showed out you're going to take there, and that's pretty much it. And that's our diversity that we get with the commander we work on battleships. Now, of course, if you got a secondary uh, secondary strong battleship like a German battleship or American secondary battleship, of course, throw a secondary build on that and go for it. So that's what's done to the builds. What about the gameplay? Has it made a big impact on the gameplay? Uh, I'd say kind of. Now, take this with a grain of salt. This is just from me playing for about four hours on a Thursday evening. 
But I did notice that there were much less ships sitting in the back and trying to snipe. Mostly just ships that would normally be doing that either way, like Yamatos, Thunderers, and um, Vermonts. At least playing at higher tier, where that I definitely had the biggest impact. The other ships, battleships at least, were getting in closer. They were pushing. And I say no, they were like pushing hard, pushing aggressive. No. Compared to how Deadeye was being played, this was pushing. They were getting close to the cap circles, actually getting within a secondary battery range and getting within their detection range of the caps. And I certainly had a different mentality playing because now I was back to, oh, it doesn't really matter if I'm spotted or not because I don't have Deadeye anymore on my Kremlin, on my Montana, on my Vermont. It doesn't matter how close I am now at this point. If I'm fine with being detected, I can just, you know, get in there close, tank for my team now, and get my guns in the fight. There's no more penalty to me being detected anymore besides, of course, me being spotted. So that is definitely happening more uh, now. But is it a huge impact where it's like, oh, everything's fixed. Everyone's pushing now. The battleships are in the front of the pack now. Absolutely not. It hasn't fixed that, but it has put an end to everybody and their moms trying to be a sniper, which is very, very, very refreshing. But some ships have absolutely been shafted by this change, and that is, of course, the Italian battleships. The Lepanto and the Cristoforo Colombo were heavily, heavily reliant on Deadeye. The Marco Polo, too. Now, they have buffed the Sigma of some of the lower tier Italian battleships and buff their damage and buff their reload time too. This definitely needs to happen with the Lepanto, the Marco Polo, and the Colombo. Those three ships now are pretty miserable to play, especially the Marco Polo. The Marco Polo was so, so, so dependent upon Deadeye to get decent salvos now, but it's gone now, so it can't do that. Now, between the Lepanto and the Colombo, the Colombo is of course, the better off because she has 16 guns. So her dispersion is still really, really, really bad. But you're still throwing 16 shells at the target. And even if just 7 of these 15-inch sap shells hit, you're doing like 12 or 13k in that salvo. But it's just so terrible now, the dispersion. It's, oh my god, it sucks. Um, but you can, of course, get close now without, without having to worry that you're losing that Deadeye buff anymore. And the enemy battleships are a bit more inclined to get close to because they no longer have to worry about that either. So in some ways, it's better for it there, but still, of course, at higher tier, even before Deadeye was a thing, a lot of the matches were taking place at, of course, 15 kilometers plus range. And Christopher Columbo's dispersion at 15 kilometers plus, you'll get lucky every now and then and get a pretty decent salvo, but for the most part, it's going to just be a shotgun. And it's extremely frustrating to have a 30 plus second reload time with an 18 kilometer range on a tier 10 battleship. And now your shells aren't consistent. With Deadite, they were consistent at least. And of course, like I've said before, I have no doubt in my mind that these ships were designed with Deadeye in mind. So hopefully we'll see some buffs for these Italian battleships in the future. Like I said, they've already buffed some of the lower tier run, uh, some of the lower tier, tier ones, and hopefully the Lepanto and Cristoforo Colombo get those buffs too in the future. Like I said before, Deadeye was not the sole cause of higher tier matches problems. I mean, like the matchmaker, it's like, what is this thing doing sometimes? I've had teams where all my teams are just normal clan tags, but like five of the enemy teams guys are purple clan tags and they're not in a division. So it's like, what the heck? And purple clan tags, by the way, if you don't know, that means those guys got to hurricane during clan battle season, which means those guys are very, 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 very good players and know what they're doing. And they're being stacked on a team while my team is just a bunch of normal dudes. And it's like, God, this is a little unfair. Uh, of course, there's still a problem with HE spam. There's still issues with like some of the core mechanics of CVs and stuff, and with some of the ships they've been introducing into the game. A lot of the newer premium ships are uh, more of these very rapid-firing HE spammy ships with ridiculous ranges for their guns. Um, but again, this is a step in the right direction. 
that unfortunately was a step in the wrong direction, <laughs> a big step in the wrong direction uh, that has at least been corrected for the time being. But overall, it's been a very positive change for, for me at least. Uh, a lot of these matches now are happening at a bit more of a close range. I mean, again, close by tier 10 standards, like 15 kilometers. That's a heck of a lot closer than some ships were getting back when Deadeye was a thing. And if you didn't know, of course, if you had Deadeye equipped on your battleship commander, you got a free reset. Just log into the game and you'll see that that commander has been reset and all of his skill points are there available for you to distribute as you see fit, which is just going to be the tank build. Or if you get a secondary battleship, the secondary build. Now, that being said, with these ships moving in a little bit closer now, uh, it's much more, much, much more better to play secondary focused battleships now because these ships are no longer, you know, at the A line or at the J line, and you don't have to go chase them down to try to get within secondary range now. They are now coming to you again, so that's, a, of course, a big pickup there for a secondary lover, so that's a wonderful thing happening there. But anyway, that's just my initial impressions as how Deadeye's removal has affected the game so far. Let me know what you guys are experiencing in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. One way to 30,000 subs, just past 25,000 a few days ago, and that was absolutely awesome. Make sure you go check out Tuesday's video and enter in the giveaway there. Also, tonight I will be live streaming right here on the channel from 5 p.m. U.S. Central Time to 8 p.m. U.S. Central Time. So please come check out the stream here. we will also be streaming on Twitch as well. So guys, hope you're having a wonderful Friday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.